I keep mine separate too, but every single time Hillary asks me if I can do something, I have to open this computer and my That's what I did for the first year, and now I just everything's on it. All the school boards are like blue. All the soccer stuff for kids stuff is green. But then but then people well, I can't. No, nobody can see my but nobody can see my calendar. But my work calendar goes through a lot of people. Yeah, and then this goes through my house, through my phone. You're talking about yeah, seven minutes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, you can put all your phone stuff in the outlet. I need one of the teenagers' phones. Mm -hmm. I figure seven minutes, oh, I might as well do a tour of the table. Oh, no, I don't know. No, thank you. I just want to go. Okay. But thank you for I need an Instagram message. I just want to go. No, Sarah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the right one for that. Is that for Instagram? <laughs> I was like, there's no way to show that. No. <laughs> <laughs> not happen. Sarah.
for the superintendent search. Can I have the uh, attendance, please? Mrs. Durgan? Here. Mrs. Giftos? Here. Mrs. Glidden? Here. Mr. Gill? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. Okay. Can you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda tonight? No. No? Great. Um, for public comment, because we don't have a podium and we're in B, I guess is the way to say it, if you can come up to the table if you have anything that you wanted to share as we get started. Okay, seeing none. Moving into the selection process. So. We had a really good turnout for the interview committee. We had 44 total respondents that have requested to join us, which is great. There is one student, seven teachers, and we were able to break that down to what phase level they're from. So four from the high school, two at the middle school, and one from the K-2. Six staff members, again with a breakdown, four administrators, and 26 community members. So that's a really good turnout. Um, excited for the number of folks who want to take part in this. Keeping those numbers in mind, what we need to discuss tonight is how we're going to organize the committee. Um, so Nick, Sarah, and I have talked a lot about um, different options and how to kind of bring this together as far as makeup. And the feeling was that 10 members would make a really good committee. Um, this would allow for everybody to have an opportunity to ask questions within the time frame. Um, it allows for a little more, I want to say comfort. It could be pretty daunting to walk into 18 people looking at you as you go to do your interview. Um, so we came up with some options, and at this point I'd ask Nick and Sarah to add any comments on how we came to the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I'll just kind of jump in by just adding that we talked about a larger group we talked about the potential of having two groups so if we had like 16 or 18 people involved or 16 to 20 do we break into an a and a b and then you know the more we thought about that the more we thought this is our first round set of interviews it's really important that we get perspective from all the different folks but we also don't want to make this process selection more cumbersome than it needs to be and we want to be careful to make sure that our um our candidates that eileen said last night are also interviewing us aren't running this kind of unnecessarily complicated gauntlet. Um, so the idea of having one large group we talked about, I, I kind of came in with my practice of, of preference in executive searches, which is the pizza theory. That's eight, buy a pizza for eight people. Um, but that just seemed too small. We have too many really important community members that need to be involved. So we kind of wrangled it around and landed on this 10 number uh, of kind of an optimal number of folks. And then we just thought that presenting it to all of the, the board with some just options of how that 10 might shake out would start to structure this conversation. Obviously, it does not have to be one of these four necessarily, but um, we thought it just would be helpful to kind of wrangle around some ideas um, to get us started. <coughs> I'll say a, a couple more things. So, uh, first of all, like, this, these are just suggestions as Nick sort of closed with, it's up to us to decide as a group what we go with ultimately. Um, I think the other thing you'll notice uh, and a couple of the ones on the bottom, it said one board member instead of two board members. And, and the justification behind that um, was because we as a board, as a full board, get sort of the first look at all the applicants, and then we'll get, we'll get the last look as well. And so it was with the, in, with the incredible interest that we've had, we figured if there's an opportunity for us to give up more spots to members of the community or, teacher, or um, teachers or admin, then we should do that knowing that we have additional opportunities to sort of vet the candidates. Um, so that was the logic there and, and I think really just open for discussion. Um, Joanne, can you give us some historical data on like what, what the groups of search committees have looked like in the past? Or is this a typical size or is it usually bigger or smaller? We've had bigger groups, but we've had two groups, an A and a B group. Um, that they interviewed with two different groups. And we've done that um, 
last time we did it with only one group, but the time before that we did it with two groups. Um, but there were about 15. Okay. Even the one group was 15? <coughs> I like I like the idea of having four parents because then we can talk about having a parent from each phase level. So having a primary parent representative, a Wentworth representative, a middle school representative, a high school representative. So, so we, we collect that We did not collect yeah. the information at yeah. the phase level. Okay. And if we were going to do that, we also have community members who don't have children in the system. Right. So we would who need... Who might have had, had parent, like, had children. Yeah. Maybe or okay. children who are not yet into a school, school, school age. Mm -hmm. um, so we would be excluding somebody along the phase level age. Um, I will say, for point of clarification, that says parents. Oh, right. It that should say. probably say community yeah. members yeah. Um, okay I had actually saved it and I think I sent the wrong version that's okay I just wanted that. to point out when because yeah. to Amy's point of mm -hmm. hitting each phase level that appearance wise okay. looks to exclude anyone who does not have children which right. I don't and think I is anyone's objective that. no. okay that's totally I, fine I think I would be <clears throat> more comfortable if administrators staff and teachers weren't grouped together in that manner because <clears throat> okay. that only allows I mean at the most you have five um, and those are you know diverse groups that we want to hear mm -hmm. from I, I would be I would suggest breaking those out um, into like and maybe maybe this means increasing the number slightly but you know two two and two or um, yeah. Um, going to that, if it's all right, I'd like to go back to the demographics. I was just going to say that. So I'm wondering if we should, if it should be more proportional. To, to how many people apply? Well, I mean, yeah, that on this, group, the middle three is the group you're talking about. Yeah, right. so I understand what you're saying, but I feel like those voices are valuable. Mm -hmm whether we had 100 people sign up or two people sign up, in and my I, opinion. No, I don't disagree with that. I think where I was wondering is if you would put, like, an extra position towards staff or teachers and have one administrator. Maybe. Or if having the two is... I mean, that's what we're here to discuss, right? Mm -hmm. I just, my suggestion is to break those out. Okay. I, would I, oh, I, I agree with that. I... Um, I don't like that they're lumped in. I think they should be separate. Um, I also wondered, I understand the, the challenge with maybe not enough there to do that, but is there anything wrong with, as the committee gets fleshed out, you know, making sure we seek a, another representative from the schools that might, might not have signed up but might be willing to participate? So I just wondered what people thought about that as well. Do we have to that have to be in terms of the staff? Do they have to be limited to the people who signed up? I think that's unfair to handpick people who mm -hmm. didn't sign up just mm -hmm. because we want more people. I mean, we gave people the opportunity to sign up, yeah. and they either did or they didn't. Yeah. Keep in mind that <clears throat> there was an incredible response to the survey, right. mm -hmm. which people may have taken different different approaches to that, but I would see that as someone making sure that their voice is being heard and then maybe they just didn't have the time to commit to right. this. So I, I think that's even of equal importance. Um, yeah. but that's fair. So, so sure. did you guys look at the numbers in terms of not not thinking about ten as a set number, but if we took one from each of the categories that we did have an applicant, that's nine. A student makes ten and then if we said a board member is 11 and then four community members is 15, so that, that is, you know, bumping the size of the committee up, mm -hmm. but it, I think, does lend itself to working within the applicant pool that we did receive. Yeah. <clears throat> I worry that 10 is too small, and, and I like that idea. Yeah. See um, that again, April? 
if we took one from each of the representative categories of where we did have an applicant for yeah. teachers, staff, and administrators, that would be nine. Our student is 10. Uh, one school board member would be 11. And okay. then we could accommodate, you know, four community members to make it 15. Or we could say five community members and make it 16. Like, it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, we could play with that number. But in terms of basing our committee on who applied and where the interest was and, and where the representation is, from our applicants. I don't think that that's an unmanageable mm -hmm. number. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I would be more comfortable having a slightly larger group, I think. Just pers that's my personal opinion, to accommodate just more voices. <clears throat> One thing I would ask that people think about as you think about inflating this group, which, which I agree and understand everybody's logic. My concern is, is that because these interviews tend to be pretty structured, you're going to have people asking questions. Usually you go around a circle, everyone asks a question. It's, it's kind of a structured interaction. It is having 15 people versus 10, th does that detract from the, the tone of the environment you're setting in the interview? In my experience, being involved in executive level searches, when it gets that large, it turned the, the dynamic changes. It, it can be it can be a little awkward, and it's not because the superintendent shouldn't be able to handle themselves in front of people, and that's certainly a good argument. It's just been my experience that the group much larger than ten gets a little bit cumbersome. But if the if the board feels confidently that we need to have fifteen to have all these voices on the interview committee, with the knowledge of what Sarah said, that people express their voices in other ways too. I can, I'm amenable to that. I just wanted to voice a word of caution from my experience that those larger committees can be a little bit, it can make the entire interview more awkward, and we wouldn't want our own structure to detract from getting an accurate reading on our candidate. Am I correct in that the, this committee will meet ahead of, ahead of the interviews? Yes. Yeah. And like, just because there's 15 people on the committee doesn't mean every, every each 15, of those 15 people have to ask a question. I mean, they don't all have to ask questions. No. Right. So my my interest is less in how many questions are asked and more in getting the um, the perspective of those 15 people who hear the answers. I agree. I would sit. Sure. I would be willing to sit in a. I, my expectation going into a committee like this would not even necessarily be that I said a word. It could be that I literally am sitting there and that I would have a list of criteria that I was looking for, you know, this exit slip idea that when these folks are finished up their interview, they will be able to provide input and feedback whether or not they asked an interview question. Have you talked with MSMA about the structure of, of the interview for that committee? We actually have that meeting next week. Okay. And they're going to guide yes. us on how to. I mean, I, I'm ask asking that because questions and all I, at the state level, when we do <coughs> interviews, we have to use the same. So you couldn't be able to use that sort of exit information because it could be arbitrary. It needs to be um, the same question asked of by each individual, the same exact way with the same data points taken based on that. And so that's what we do too. Okay. So it'll actually be right. So exit slip wasn't the right person. word, but, but conceptually, I'm speaking. on the same. Right. Not everyone has will ask a question when it's a larger group, but they will all be able to fill out um, a rating sheet if that's what you use. And I assume they are all part of. Are they all part of deciding what questions get asked? Yes, they'll be part of okay, the so two meetings that we have upcoming. I I can appreciate your comments, Nick, about ten. Um, however, I, I've seen a lot of these kinds of search be successful with larger groups. Right. And in fact, Scarborough has been, you know, used larger groups. And I, when I've been involved in hiring people in education, it, it's been larger than 10 and it's worked great. I think people knowing what their role is, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of am I going to be an active participant in terms of asking questions or am I going right. to be here to, you know, Hear the answers and and then weigh in on an evaluation process at the end. I think I think knowing what each person's role is in that interview will help with all that mm -hmm. awkwardness that you referenced. When you when you read about superintendent searches in the state and you look at the interview committee, it's 
oftentimes one in 10. And I'm worried that 10 um, excludes the opportunity to have a very diverse group and, and broad representation from all aspects of our community. So that's why I would be inclined to say 15 is better than 10. So you're saying that seven, no, no, never mind. I just thought something. No. In our process for interviewing, we always have the same person ask the same question. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everyone's a person who's assigned a question, and that is who they would ask for whoever you're interviewing. For each interview. Yeah. This list also doesn't include, sorry, can you go back to the other one? Sure. Is under the administrative staff teachers, would you include in their central office? No. That would be, so that would be in an addition. additional to, to the 15. Two out of 15. Two, right? Mm -hmm. It's Monique and Allison. And Allison. Allison. And Can you go back to the other Okay, so now 15's gone to 17. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good point, Sarah. Thank you. <clears throat> and we've had that before. So, so what and, if we and do Joseph, two, two, we've and had two? That before. You have had that before? Yeah. We could also do, instead of one from each category, we could do two teachers, two staff, two administrators. Or you could keep the teachers and staff ratio and decrease administrators given that central office is administration. Right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of two, two, and one. If you're going to have two people from the central office. Yeah. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that makes thirteen. And I'm lucky to know. What's the board member? I just, uh, I, I don't guess. know. Oh, okay. and, and I don't like decreasing the, the representation to accommodate to central office. I don't feel like the role or the voice that central office has um, fills in maybe what we would be lacking if we didn't have representation from a middle school administrator. Are example. you saying exclude central office, or are you saying no? I'm no. saying I'm st I'm still in Just favor of the 17. bigger group. Yeah. So you're now I'm going 17. up. To I'm going up to seventeen. I am too. I'm in favor. Uh, I am in favor of fifteen rep representatives from this list, and then the two central office people would be Joe and. I don't know, but it's Monique and Allison. Sorry, Monique and Allison. So I, I mean, I think how that, that. How does that get to seventy? We talked. Just, um, <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't okay. going to. I wasn't going to be because um, I've been doing this part with you. So yeah. I um, asked who on upstairs and mm -hmm. Allison and Monique. Okay. With that caveat, and they have experience. They've done it. Yeah. Some people are going to be there to to absorb all of the information and to have that unique perspective depending on where they're coming from in terms of vetting these candidates. So I'm trying to recap here because I'm trying to make my numbers make sense. So one student, two central office, that's three, two more teachers, that's five, two staff, that's seven, two admin, that's nine, one BOE, that's ten, and then five community members. I actually had a Three Unless teachers, two three BOE, staff. Four. So now, okay, so we're going up to. We're going to two BOE. I don't know. No, I'm just saying. No, I don't. That's I, I, I don't think, think that's I, I think that I like the idea of one BOE on the committee. Yeah, me too. And because we're going to have an opportunity at the start and at the end, so yeah. I yes. I really respect that idea of not taking a spot for somebody else. I agree. Mm -hmm. I like that. So the Nick Nick the numbers I had were three teachers, three staff, three admin, the student. The board member, and if we hit 15, it was four communities. So if we went to five, it would be 16 okay. plus the two administrators. I thought the two administrators, two of them were the central office. So no, 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 that's going to be no, the administrators. Four administrators, administrators are one from the high school, on one from the middle school, one. I'm still lost. Sorry. Wait, Did you say four? Yeah, yeah where are you getting five, no, four? Five. Where are you getting four administrators? Um, three. Should be three. That's what I said. Okay. Three teachers, three staff, three admin. Three admin. Okay, perfect. Thank the you. student, the board. And it was either four or five, depending on yeah, if you went to 15 right. or 16 on the community side. Right. Okay. And again, it's... Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. So 
I would also be, uh, this is, maybe this is just getting ridiculous, but I would also be fine if we did one student, two teachers, two staff, two administrators, two central office, one BOE, and five community members. Total? That's still 15. Right? 8, 9, 10, 15. Yep. 15 as opposed to what, what were we going to do? I'd love to have those extra two voices. I thought it was going to be 17 because we were going to do 15. Yeah, I'm just all offering. Just, just, oh, you just, if you want to keep, it at, if you wanna keep it at 15, you can yeah. you can do two teachers, two staff, two administrators, and five community members. Oh, gotcha. Along okay. with the other. I think once you, you're done, once you get to 15, the difference of two people is not that right. significant. Yeah, that's fine. I, personally, We've it's, now it's taken 10, high. and it, I, um, it's a little too high for me, but I understand the both of it just seems threatening, honestly, to, as someone who would be interviewing to walk into that big room. But we have to balance that between making sure everybody's voice is heard. So I think um, they're Do you mean uncomfortable to the applicant? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I, I guess I, I hear that, but this isn't uncommon. It's not like yeah. it's not like it's usually 10 and we're going up to 17. It's common that it's that large. So I, I think people who are interviewing for these positions are used to respecting a large visit. I'm sorry. Are you, are you any less comfortable with 17 than you are with 15? No, that's, right. that was so, my point. Yeah, so if we're going to go 15, we might as well go 17 for the other two in there. All right, so we're back to the three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean. We also can break it into two groups, right? Yeah. yeah. We could. Uh, I mean, logistically, that becomes. I mean, Joe, can you no, talk I was about that? We gotta add two. Dylan. <laughs> um, Joe, you said that Scarrow has had experience doing, doing the, the, the two groups. And can you chat about how that went and what your yep. opinion of it was? Um, so the person had a, uh, I would say, a, an hour with one group, and then uh, they were brought to another group, and uh, spent an hour with that group, and so we coordinated um, how the, where they went and how they got there and all of that. Personally, I think it works better with one group. Yeah. Okay. Because um, you know everyone's hearing the same thing at the same time. Yeah. 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 Which I think would probably be the more beneficial. The yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Especially I when you do the breakdown afterwards and conversation. Right. Because okay. right. mm -hmm. a person, no matter if they're given the same questions or they're, they're they're usually given other questions. So now they bring the two groups together to say these are what questions we ask, this is what how they answer them. And not everyone hears the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it did work better with one group. Mm -hmm. So is the numbers mm -hmm. something we vote on separately from like how to choose the people? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are we at a point where we want to? I believe we are. And we can go around on this for a while. We should just make a call. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody wants to make a motion on oh. the numbers. So I move to create a superintendent search committee of um, 17. People? Do I have to say the makeup of it? No, it's actually going to be 18. Yeah. Because okay. when we do the math. I thought so. <laughs> Wait, yeah. no, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With four community members? Uh, oh, I thought we were going with four community? Yeah. I thought we were doing no. five. Okay, well, obviously we're not ready for the motion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think it's because we had so many conversations. Yeah. yeah. A I lot think of X's here. We had, so, set, we had upped it to five if we were going to go down on teachers, staff, and administrators. Okay. But, you know. The original, the original option was four. So stay with the four. Four. Okay. I mean that's fine. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're ready for motion. Okay. I move to create a superintendent <laughs> search committee um, comprised of seventeen members. And do you want me to list the breakup, breakdown? So thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Excellent. Unanimous plus two. Great. Um, so now we talk about the, how we get to the individuals. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few options with that. Um, and Joanne, I don't know if you want to talk about historically how the decisions were reached. Well, one time they put names in a hat and pulled them out like that. Um, and then they were just picked. By, by their interest and
people had I don't know if they had to write why they wanted to be on the committee um, but that's what they looked over so they drew names out of a hat and then looked and no, she's saying no, one time they one did this time. and one time second time. Two separate instances. We had people write why they yes, wanted yeah. to participate. Yeah, mm -hmm. to inform our conversation, can you elaborate on how you got community members and sure. to um, respond? It was a real easy survey on SurveyMonkey. Love those free sites. Um, <laughs> and everyone provided the information. Have they been part of a search committee before? So we actually have that criteria. Have they been part of the search? And then why they wanted to participate in the search. Um, and the, it varied. A lot of people with wanting to, you know, ensure that their children or their grandchildren had a really good experience with a new superintendent. Um, others because they wanted to be involved. And there were some great answers as to why people were interested to be part of the committee. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of options on how we can look at this. We, we can actually look at some of the respondent names, um, but that would wind up being in an executive session um, because it, it's not appropriate, according to NSMA, to talk about um, respondents, even if it's anonymous, which is, you know, the list does not include names that we have, um, so that we're not discussing content of a response. That it just really wouldn't feel good. Um, you know, again, the other option is to just simply say that the criteria is based on, you know, have you had experience before? That may eliminate some of our um, teachers, however, because some teachers have not had the opportunity to participate. So not, we would need I'm to turn with that because okay. there's a lot of people I'm sure who haven't had experience who still have a valid voice. I mean, so sorry, I would take that one off. So the only kinds of information that you have gathered is. Or, or whether they've participated in a search before and what their interest is and why. Okay. And, no, and time commitment. Okay, no. so. And that was part of the um, survey letter. That was what Was I letting asked. them know that it was a time commitment and the dates, so people knew going into it that. So did they. Three days. Did they make a commitment that if I'm chosen, I am mm -hmm. available for all these dates? Yes. All 26. Yes. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I can start if you want. Sure. Um, well, I mean, there are some that are obvious. There's like literally one person in the category, so there's no choice there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's a really good candidate. <laughs> no, I mean, there's more than one. There's one student, there's one K2, there's one high school, one. There are I mean, several buckets where we only have one. Where yes. we only have one person. Yeah. Um, so that's 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 already done. Um, I mean, I, I I personally understand that even if we see the respond the responses of the people, we don't have names associated with that. But to me, if we are handpicking members based on their response, that's a bias, mm -hmm. and I'm not comfortable with that. So. As long as all of, as long as the the people who don't who have more than one in a category are eligible, I think it should be random. Okay, I agree with that. I think we didn't make the uh, the criteria clear in advance, and if there was specific criteria for how we would select, and therefore we can't just arbitrarily come up with it after the fact, mm -hmm. and so it would be irresponsible of us, I think, to to do anything but random selection. I agree. I have to agree with that as well. Um, I think it is, it's the fairest way, um, especially knowing that you know, there's so many voices and so many opinions. I would want to have a really broad section of the community weighing in on this decision. And I think that's the fairest way to do so. So my opinion is that um, we should have the greatest skill set on um, the committee but given the information that was gathered, I don't think there's the opportunity for that. And um, with that, I would um, agree that we should pick randomly. I, do you want to go next? I have nothing to add. Okay. I agree that I think it's the best path forward. 
I'm concerned that the nature of random could negate what you just said about getting members from a broad section of the community. I agree with that. Because if it's random, we could potentially get a committee that doesn't represent the broad diversity of Scotland. And that's a big concern for me. If it's not broad representation. But I think that is an unbiased way of making that choice. Like I know, like I said, I know we don't have names, and I, see, I hear your concern, but at the same time, like just reading the responses, we all have a bias. So, and like I, I'm, I'll just restate, I'm not comfortable picking a bias mm -hmm. committee. And that you do run the risk of maybe you have, you know, maybe you draw the hat for first grade parents or eight corners. I mean, but at least fate's decided. <laughs> <laughs> and not our biases. <laughs> when they've done it randomly, really, because you have 15 people on the committee, you're go they're going to have a voice and you'll have other people too. My, confidence, your opinion, my confidence in random is certainly improved because mm -hmm. we do have some level of um, specialized categorization. That's right. the word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, how would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Coloring, that was a loaded question. <laughs> it's not my choice. I mean, between those two choices. <laughs> I didn't run for office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, never mind. I like to shine the spotlight on you, Joanne. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with April. I... I think the law of averages is in our favor to probably get a pretty broad representation from the community, community in a random fashion, and I think it's the most fair, unbiased way to do that. And I, I can appreciate that and get behind that. Um, because I didn't know which way we were going to go with this, I don't have the buckets um, so I'd want to suggest that we pull the numbers or the names tomorrow um, during our meeting and be able to name folks that okay do we need to vote on how we're going to choose we do. I would like to make a motion that tomorrow evening we establish a randomized method for drawing um, 17 members of the superintendent search committee. Second. Can right. I just clarify? Yeah. yeah. Clarify something because we're drawing 15, not 17. Oh, okay. uh, and so actually, can I? Actually, so drawing 14. 14. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I'll be drawing 14, not 16, because yeah. two of them are already you know, picked. The so, yeah. um, and, and we would not be drawing the board member. The right. board member will be appointed? Yes. So Which is that constitution? Yes, that'd be 14. 14. Yeah, because we were at 17 mm -hmm. people. Okay, so you have to amend that. Then, so okay. my amendment is that tomorrow evening we will draw 14 members to serve on the superintendent search committee randomly at tomorrow night. Yeah. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Excellent. Unanimous plus two. Can we get one of those big? <laughs> <laughs> like the bingo. Oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> we have one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you have one of those, Joanna? We have one. We have one at the middle school, I know. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's a good idea. That's, that's fun. That'd be kind of fun. Can we put some? Um, fun? <laughs> you know, yeah, I like fun. Fun is good. Um, do we want to talk about the appointment for the board member, or do we want to wait until tomorrow for that? I think it might as well just lay it all out. Okay. Um, there were a lot of folks who stood forward, and I really do appreciate the interest from everyone. Um, it was a, it was actually a really easy decision to make on who I was appointing. Alicia, if you would step in as our appointee. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it really goes back to 
all of the work that you have done um, managing people, you, you bring a skill set that I think really is going to provide a great balance for us. So thank you. Yay. Thank you for doing that, Alicia. Okay. All right. Um, that said, if we um, could have a motion to go to an executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056A to discuss the superintendent search, not to return to public session. So we. Oh, actually, we don't need that. We do don't need an executive session. No, I don't think we, I don't think we need All right. <laughs> I guess we'd have the vote and vote to not go to that. Right. Okay. Because yeah, somebody still has a second. It, yeah, second. All those in favor? <laughs> not going. No, I'm not, not going. No, I'm oh, no, going. going to. Oh, because because it's on there and it wasn't an adjustment. We actually have to vote and then we vote it down to say that we're not going to go to executive session. I understand. Thank you. Okay. All right. So Thank all those in favor? Is everyone okay with not going? Because the, the logic behind going was to to choose if, if we, we had we, decided that we were going to yes. select. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Right. So because we don't need to do that, we should vote it down. Okay. okay. Anyone in favor? All those opposed? You know, it's plus two. That's plus two. Okay. All right. And now it's a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>